One, go! We begin this week with a pair of NASA missions from the Southern Hemisphere, starting with this one from the Australian Arnhem Space Centre. Local media report it was the first commercial rocket launch in Australia's history and NASA's first from a launch pad outside the US. The rocket carried equipment to observe the Alpha Centauri star system, which according to Equatorial Launch Australia can only happen from the Southern Hemisphere as it's visible year-round south of the equator. Three, two. Moving now to New Zealand, where aerospace manufacturer Rocket Lab's Electron rocket carried NASA's capstone device to map a path for the orbit of a moon-based space station named Gateway. NASA dubs Gateway a staging point for long-term deep space exploration. The mission was in support of NASA's Artemis program, which looks to put people on the moon for the first time in half a century. In other news, it was July 4th, American Independence Day 1997, when NASA scientists got news that the Mars Pathfinder landed on the Red Planet. Pathfinder was the first robotic rover to visit Mars. The lander returned more than 16,000 images, while the rover sent back another 550 in what was considered a highly successful mission. Meanwhile, at Europe's tallest active volcano, researchers test a new generation of rovers they hope to send to the moon. Scientists from the European Space Agency, or ESA, and the German Aerospace Center test the robots in harsh terrain with raging winds simulating the lunar surface while using the same type of technology that makes video game controllers rumble. We use haptic controllers to move our robots, especially move robotics, robotic arms. So imagine you have a normal joystick and you control an arm, it follows the movement, but with haptic feedback you indeed would feel what a robot feels. So if you move our haptic device and the robot touches an obstacle, you indeed feel, feel the touch. Something Kruger calls impossible without haptic feedback. Scientists say controlling rovers from NASA's gateway, the long-term exploration staging point we mentioned earlier, means less of a delay between input and rover opening the door to new research not possible when controlling a rover from Earth. The team on Mount Etna says it's more likely robots, not humans, are the future of space research. Finally this week, private spaceflight company Virgin Orbit launched U.S. Department of Defense satellites from the Mojave Desert in California. A modified Boeing 747 jumbo jet took off in the night and released its payload over the Pacific Ocean northwest of Los Angeles. Arash Arabasadi, VOA News.